joining us here on Vipe Live for this presentation of Elgin Wildcats Soccer as tonight the Bastrop Bears are in town for the final home game of the Elgin Boys Soccer season. Alongside you for the call, my name is Jay Kerbin. Pleasure to bring this one to you live from Wildcat Stadium on an absolutely gorgeous Tuesday afternoon here at the home of the Wildcats. Two seniors being honored today for Elgin, Julio Villa and Ryder Michael, two of the captains of this Elgin soccer squad. And it'll be Julio Villa that will get the ball rolling from the center spot just as soon as the referees gave the ready for play. As the Wildcats look for their second win here in district play and they look to close out the season on a positive note. Meanwhile, the Bastrop Bears coming in at fifth place in the district, currently with a record of 3-5-4 and four in District 18-5A play. Right now, they're on the outside looking in when it comes to playoff spots, but that could change with a win today and on Friday when the Bears take on Maynard. This team is not out of it. And so we'll see who can come out victorious in this evening's match. Looks like Lane Eckert, Memo Hernandez, Peyton Moss, and Juan Mendoza making up the midfield four for Coach Ronnie Michael. A team complete with Anthony Jones, Pedro Tellez, Luis Hernandez, and Nestor Martinez at the back. The goalkeeper is freshman David Macedo. And the Wildcats today with nearly a full complement of players. Some days this team does not have that deep of a bench, but they do have that luxury today. As the referee starts out the action, Wildcats on the ball. Last match for Elgin was a 7-1 loss suffered at the hands of Pflugerville Connolly. Wildcats just couldn't quite crack the Cougars this season. And a couple of lopsided meetings between those two. We're going to get back on the right track here against the Bears today. Bastrop won the reverse fixture between these two back on February the 12th by a final score of 3-0 in that one. But this is a Bastrop team that has struggled a bit since that win. That's actually their last win back on February 12th against Elgin. They have come up with some ties against some of the district's best, but haven't been able to win since then. It's a seven-match winless streak for the Bears, and they try to end that here today. This is a through ball played in for Max Martinez, who comes up the center. Martinez tries to lay it off, and right at the edge of the 18, a challenge done well by Pedro Tellez. Ball tried to get to Aviles, the sophomore forward, and now he's in with it on the left side of the box, and that one just missed the far post. Early chance for Bastrop after the initial challenge by Nestor Martinez and Pedro Tellez couldn't fully deal with the threat. Bears miss a chance to nick an early one right there. Thomas Trainer in the center of the park. Continues his run into the edge of the box. Anthony Jones came out to deal with him. He's pursued to the corner by Pedro Tellez. And the Bears win a throw. First couple minutes elapsed here at Wildcat Stadium. Elgin won on Wednesday against Cedar Creek, lost on Friday against Pflugerville Connolly. So today a chance to close out their homestand 
on the right note. This is the last of three consecutive home matches for Coach Ronnie Michaels Bunch, who will conclude their season on Friday. That game, 5.30 start time at Hendrickson. Throw in, Martinez. James Ramon. Clearance gives Bastrop a throw near the center line. And they'll have to run all the way down there to get that ball, which gives us a chance to talk about their recent results. Some heartbreakers as of late for these Bears. They were 1-1. They drew at Cedar Creek to close out the month of February. Then to start March, they played three times in four days and lost 2-1 away to Pflugerville. Drew 2-2 against Connolly, as this is a chance for Max Martinez at the edge of the box. Martinez can't quite get through. Saving play by Anthony Jones. And then they were 5-3, defeated at Hendrickson, were the Bears, as they've earned the game's first quarter. So this is a team that has been close, just knocking on the door. They were defeated 1-0 at Pflugerville in their last match, as this corner has a bit too much weight on it. Bears that have been doing all the right things and just not getting the results. Dangerous position there for a moment. It was Noah Tyson on the ball. Eventually, Julio Villa comes away with it. Play back to Memo Hernandez. Hernandez with a bit of pace. Now a turn. Can't quite play the through ball yet. Now Eckert on the ball. Payton Moss. Tellez. Grandes tried to win the ball back. Couldn't do it. Anthony Jones. Calm, cool, collected on the ball. And it's one back by Tyson. Only as far as Nestor Martinez. Grandes. Lost it to Trainer. And a substitution now for Coach Michael. As Ryder Michael, the senior captain, enters the game in place of Peyton Moss. And Luis Hernandez enters the game for the first time in the midfield. Looks like he'll replace... Harvin Grandes. Tellez. Played back for Hernandez. Now Memo. Counter-attacking chance for Diaz. Through balls nicely played in, and the effort from distance is not close. Goal kick. Off a goal kick, Villa chases. Kind of timidly played. Julio Villa still on the ball. Tried to link up with his fellow senior, Michael. Instead finds Memo Hernandez, but a foul called from all the way across the pitch. Gives the ball back to the Bears. Three shots and a corner for the Bears early. Nothing doing so far offensively for the Cats. As seven and a half minutes have gone by in this first half. Now Grandes is through ball. Can't quite connect with Villa. Bears try to spring the counter, but Mendoza thwarts it. Now Memo Hernandez onto his left foot. Through ball to Villa. Julio Villa has scored. 
He's Meg the keeper there. And he's given Elgin the early lead. Nicely done by the senior who had two in the win over Cedar Creek and now has opened the scoring here in the game's ninth minute. And the assist to Memo Hernandez. Confident finish on that low driven strike just then by Villa. That's what four years of experience will do. And the Cats leading scorer has once again come through. Hernandez gets the assist and he was the one who had the lone goal in the loss to Pflugerville Connolly. Edge of the box, Martinez stops at turns, lays off into the middle. Macedo comes out to challenge, and he's done just enough to keep the lead. The chance was there for Max Martinez, who laid it off to Yeson Aviles. And the sophomore forward couldn't tuck it away. Michael played to Tellez. And it's given away in the defensive third. Diaz. Martinez, and a clearance there by Luis Hernandez does not quite diffuse the threat. Emmanuel Diaz on the right flank. Turning, Diaz with a cross into the middle, and Thomas Trainer didn't get enough of it. Bears have had the better of the opportunities. Cats have the only goal. Ryder Michael to Luis Hernandez with space and time on the ball. Has Eckert in the middle. Tries to play to Villa instead. Hernandez picks up the loose ball. Nice challenge that time to win the ball back. Bears come the other way. Through ball, Vasquez was open. Couldn't quite get it there. Uresti plays it back. Trainer. Aerial through ball, headed away by Jones. Trainer still coming forward. Played to Martinez on the flank. He's on side. Into the box. And his pass into the middle is cleared away by Jones. Tellez leaps up for it. Villa the other way with pace. Julio Villa wards off a would-be tackler. And this will be nothing more than a clearance. Back to the keeper. Dylan Tyson, the sophomore in net today. Ball won back nicely by Memo Hernandez. Ryder Michael. Onside play. Grandes. Parried away by Tyson. A good chance there to double the lead. Wildcats looking dangerous on the counter in the game's opening minutes. Trainer, offside. If you're just joining us, Wildcats have opened the scoring here on Senior Day. Julio Villa in the ninth minute. From right at the left edge of the 18, put it right between the legs of the Bears keeper. Other than that, it's been Bastrop that's had the better of the opportunities. But it's been timely defending 
that has kept them off the score sheet. This one into the box, but dealt with by the keeper, Tyson. Out on to the flank for Diaz, who wins a throw, courtesy of Luis Rodriguez. Edwin Montufar will take the throw. Up the right flank. Max Martinez with pace. Jones in defense. Martinez into the box. Denied by Macedo. Stuck out a leg for a difficult save. And the best chance of the afternoon goes by the boards. That's got to put some energy into the Cats, who get a huge lift right there from Macedo. Surely Martinez could have made it 1-1. Play switched. Diaz. Challenged by Eckert. One back to Rodriguez. But kept... Alive by Mon Montufar. James Ramon on the ball. Out wide to Trainer, Who can't play it back in. Taken away by Memo Hernandez. Who draws a foul. Pretty good start here for the Cats. Looking much better than they did on Friday. When they were beaten 7-1 by Pflugerville Connolly. Looking to win today and make it two out of three here at home during this homestand. Free kick goes all the way to Tyson. Who sends it back up the pitch. The wind playing with that ball in the air. Slight breeze blowing here. It was a little bit stiffer earlier. Now it picks up again here. Blowing from right to left. on your screen. Not sure what the delay is here. Maybe a substitution. Headed away by Noah Tyson. Ryder Michael. We'll have more for you at halftime on the Elgin Seniors as one of them is in here. Julio Villa can't quite get the angle. Goal kick. Creative ball was played in. And Villa nearly doubled the advantage for Elgin. Chances coming thick and fast here for both teams. Tellez sends this one rolling back over the goal line. Another goal kick. And a troubling sign here for the Bears who figure if they could repeat their win over this Wildcat squad from earlier in the season and then come up with a win against Maynard a team that they drew earlier this season, that they could maybe sneak into that fourth playoff spot here in District, but all that chance basically goes away with a loss today. Elgin with a chance to not only cap off their season with a win, but to play spoiler to Bastrop. Long way to go in this match, but so far it's a good start for the Cats. Lane Eckert won the ball. Ryder Michael has his pass redirected. Salvador Uresti disrupted it. Michael gets another chance. Neatly done there on the pass to Eckert. Tried to play a through ball for Villa. 
Eckert can't win it back. Ryder Michael can't. Villa follows it in and wins the ball off a shaky clearance. Julio Villa, edge of the box. And he's going to be thwarted here by the defense of Cody Wilkinson. The sophomore defender coming to the rescue for Bastrop. Wildcat throw on the far touchline. That season that began with a 4-1 and one stretch in non-district play. Pair of wins over Giddings, both convincing. A win over Navarro, a loss at Eastside Memorial, and a win over Wimberley before losing that tournament to Glen. And then once district play started, the Wildcats toughed out an 11-game losing streak that they snapped on Wednesday when the offense came alive in a 3-1 to one win over Cedar Creek. A little bump in the road on Friday with a 7-1 loss to Pflugerville Connolly. Game they were never really in. But a chance today to win one last time in front of their home crowd, at least those that could attend. Obviously, the 2021 season has been limited in capacity throughout. Just another challenge for these young players to deal with as Martinez plays a good ball to Tyson. Tyson's through ball has a bit too much weight, and Anthony Jones will clear. How reliable has he been at the back as of late for Elgin? Just seems like you call his name every time a counter starts to form. And even though it is senior day, worth noting that Elgin has a very young team this year. Of course, some of the seniors that were originally going to play had their plans changed, their lives changed by the pandemic, as Makai Jefferson and Caden Chapman both enter the match for Coach Oscar Nunez and the Bastrop Bears. But the two seniors that stayed with the squad, Julio Villa, Ryder, Michael, this night a chance for them to end their high school soccer careers on the right note. And so far, they're off to a good start in doing that. Hernandez. Grandes played it back. And a nice spin move on the ball for Emmanuel Diaz, who springs the counter. Numbers forward here for Bastrop. Diaz into the box. Laid off into the center. Martinez didn't get enough of it. And Macedo comes out to cover. Nice and calm there from David Macedo in goal. The freshman who has improved so much with experience over the course of the season. Got to be excited for his future as an Elgin soccer fan. Hayden Moss exits the match. Lane Eckert re-enters on the substitution for Coach Ronnie Michael, who's worked with a short bench throughout the season, has placed an emphasis on possession, on cohesiveness in the midfield. And that's been born to fruition so far in this match. Hernandez. Ball won by Luis Hernandez. Villa plays it back. Mendoza. Through ball in. Goes all the way to the Bears keeper. And now some pressure on the ball one, But an effort from distance. Maybe not what Luis Hernandez was looking for.
Eckert. His through ball is blocked aside by Ramon. Katz just looking for that one ball to get into the box. Maybe this is the moment. Tellez comes up from the back line, but can't complete the attack. Sneaky little run there from Pedro Tellez. Nearly resulted in a goal. Luis Rodriguez is headed ball. Mendoza. Luis Hernandez. Ball won by Uresti. And the Bears play it forward. Martinez into the box. Chance from the center spot. And he's denied once again. David Macedo says no. The freshman keeper has now twice denied Bastrop from point blank range. He is the reason the Wildcats have kept this advantage. Another brilliant chance. Set up by the through ball in to Martinez. Max Martinez, the junior, couldn't finish it there. Gets around on this ball. It was a tough volley. Would have been a difficult finish. But Macedo is there once again already. Seven saves in the early going. Diaz couldn't connect with Martinez and now some frustration for the Bears who have seen a lion's share of possession over the last couple of minutes in some quality areas of the pitch. Just haven't been able to convert that into goals. Macedo's kick with the wind at its back. Makes it all the way to the halfway line where Elgin wins a throw. Just under 15 minutes to play in our first half here at Wildcat Stadium Senior Night on Vibe Live. Thanks for watching with us. My name is Jake Herman. Proud to bring you tonight's broadcast for Vibe Live. Julio Villa, the man who has the lone goal in this match, wins a throw for the Wildcats on the far touch line. Via into the corner. Wins another throw. Right next to that billowing corner flag. And you can see the kind of impact that the wind is having down there. Blowing a bit out away from us here in the press box. And also towards the net where the cats are attacking. Tellez will take the throw. 1-0 to Elgin. Just over 13 minutes to play in our opening half. Via turns. Look what I found. That ball was right at his feet in a good position. But he misses the far post. Shot attempts stand at 9-4 to four in favor of the Bass Drop Bears. But in the category where it matters, it is the hometown Wildcats with a 1-0 advantage courtesy of Julio Villa. Cervantes. Bears start the counter. Martinez again. Max Martinez, the junior striker, has been denied a couple of times already. Now plays it into the middle. Ramon's shot. Apologies for the camera there. It was Macedo who dove to gather it at the left post. And no scraps for the attackers to feed on. Just clinical in the first half from Macedo. But surely 
He'll have to get a bit more support from the Wildcats defense if he wants to keep the clean sheet. It's just a lot of quality chances so far for the Bears, who can see the free kick here to Elgin. Senior night festivities coming up at halftime here. For those of you that can't make it today, Wildcat Stadium to honor Ryder Michael and Julio Villa. This ball is played into the box just over the leaping head of Luis Hernandez. You can hear them testing the microphone for what will be that senior night ceremony at halftime. And they'll read it out. I'll try and get you the audio from here in the press box. And if that doesn't work out, I'll go ahead and read the notes that Coach Michael so kindly provided as to honor those seniors' contributions to the Wildcats squad. Cervantes played up ahead. Diaz is beat to it by Jones, who clears. Jones wins the ball again. He had to win it there, or Max Martinez was in. Strong play on the ball there from Luis Hernandez, who's been pretty good since being inserted into the midfield by Coach Michael about 10 minutes into this match. Mendoza couldn't play it past Wilkinson. Memo Hernandez, who has the assist on the Via tally, works his way up the right flank. Memo Hernandez, double teamed, and he's given away a foul. Trainer and Aviles were the ones who swarmed him. Ball being knocked around the middle now. Powerful clearances from both of the back lines. Elgin trying to take advantage of having the wind at their back here in the first half. Grandes from distance. Handled easily. And the teams will switch sides in the second half, and we'll see maybe what Bastrop can do with the wind at their back. But still just under 10 minutes to go before that. Advantage played on a challenge by Tellez. Chance for Martinez. His shot is handled by Macedo. Didn't get a whole lot of that one. Max Martinez, who's made several dangerous runs in the first half of play today, has done everything but score. Nicely won in the middle of the park that time by the combination of Tyson and Cervantes. A couple of juniors working in the middle. Cervantes actually a sophomore. Good challenge there by Grandes, the newest member of the Elegant Wildcats. This ball is onside, played into the middle. Martinez turning near the arc, lays it off. Ramon wheels and deals through the defense, and he's fouled Memo Hernandez on the attack. Elegant free kick. Eight minutes to go in our first half. Luis Hernandez has won the ball. Only gets it up as far as Cervantes. And now a nice little one-touch pass. On the left flank, a chance was forming. But nothing comes of it in the end. Makai Jefferson, the sophomore, was getting forward. Martinez turning on the edge of the box, went down to ground, no foul. Didn't look like anything there, looked like a perfectly neat challenge from Jones. Now a 1-2, into the box, another shot is blocked, Anthony Jones got in the way of Ramon's effort. 
Grandes looks to spring the counter and is shielded from the ball nicely by Trainer. Trainer's ball connects with Martinez. Martinez to Tyson. Played back to Cervantes. He switches the play. Diaz. Turns. Eckert comes in and wins the ball. But Bastrop just getting comfortable now in the attacking third. Feels as if a goal is coming. Can the Wildcats flip the script? Martinez. Couldn't connect with his man in the middle. Mendoza. Gives it away again. Diaz back to Cervantes. Through ball play back to Diaz, edge of the box. His effort is deflected up onto the woodwork by Macedo. He argues it went over the goal line before he touched it, and that's what the call will be. Goal kick, nicely done by the Elgin keeper, waiting that extra moment to try and touch the ball, not wanting to concede a cheap corner. And that's the kind of first half it's been for Macedo, who has done everything that's been asked of him and more. Diaz, challenged by Eckert. Got to wonder what kind of adjustments the Bears coach Oscar Nunez will make at halftime. Same thing on the other side for Ryder, for Coach Michael. This is offside. Mackay Jefferson. A bit too early on that run. He had all the space and time in the world. Good discipline by the Elgin back four. Keeping it organized at the back. You can just hear from all the way up here the communication going on down there between Macedo, Anthony Jones, and the rest of that back four. As Jones plays this ball forward, it's going to carry with the wind at its back, and Grandes comes out to get it. But the keeper, Tyson, is there. Along the far side, Trainer. Through ball is blocked nicely. Great defensive play by Pedro Tellez to stop the Bastrop counter. And Hernandez draws a foul. Been a relatively clean game so far. Very few stoppages, very few fouls in this first half. The key moments, the goal by Julio Villa in the ninth minute, and the pair of spectacular saves made by David Macedo that have kept this score where it is. Goal kick coming for the Bears. Senior night festivities coming up at halftime if you're just joining us. Elegant Soccer on Vipe Live, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Via gets megged. That was cheeky by Ramon. Who will give off the throw to... Montufar. Montufar's throw is cleared out convincingly by Villa, who drops back to help in defense. That's what Coach Michael did at the end of that Cedar Creek match. As soon as things started to get a bit hairy, Villa comes back to help defend. That's what a senior captain can do, whatever Coach Ronnie Michael has asked of him. Tyson. Makai Jefferson looking for a run. Tyson still on the ball. Played back Cervantes. Trainer couldn't get it through. So far, discipline, gap control from the Elgin defense. And now Memo Hernandez tried to split two Bastrop Bears. Couldn't do it. Ryder Michael pursuing and winning the ball. And an injury 
is going to put a halt to the action here. Clock has not been signaled to stop just yet. Looks like it was a foul conceded. So from 50 yards out, the 40-yard line, but 50 yards from goal. The Bears will get some bodies forward and try and salvage something before the break. Under two minutes to go, first half. Here's the delivery. It's going to hang up. The wind knocking it down. And that perhaps came to Elgin's rescue there. Hernandez. Memo. Just controlling the pace so nicely before he lays it off to Eckert. Eckert's ball to Grandes, who's offside by about 10 feet. Fell for the offside trap that time set by the junior Ricardo Hernandez in defense for the Bears. You can see the wind causing these kicks to just come straight down. And a chance for Elgin here if they could win the ball. They had bodies forward. Ryder Michael now. Right from the center spot. Flick pass to Eckert. Mendoza. Good one-touch soccer there for a moment, but it's given away. And a chance for Martinez. Max Martinez appealing for a handball. Still on the ball. Weaves past Tellez. Martinez into a dangerous area. Julio Villa patrols the arc and keeps him outside the box. 38 seconds to go, first half. Cross had some bite to it, but was cur but was headed aside by Luis Hernandez. Put over the touchline with 25 seconds to go in the half. Mackay Jefferson can't win the ball back. And now Memo Hernandez with 15 seconds. Tries to start the run. And a foul given from across the pitch. Bastrop takes exception because the referee with the better view decided to keep his hands at his side. It's all for naught now as the half comes to an end. And it's Elgin 1 and Bastrop nil In an entertaining back and forth first half that saw the visiting Bears generate 14 shots but most of them denied by Macedo the rest of them missed the target and that's how we got to where we are Julio Villa's goal in the ninth minute stands as the lone tally and we'll take a quick break for halftime here on Vipe Live as soon as these senior night festivities begin we'll get you live audio from that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one! Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, VIPE stands above the rest. VIPE.
Anita Lawrence and Ronnie Michael, as well as brother Levi Michael and his dog Polly, were the best for your ride, if not for COVID. After graduating from Elgin High School, Ryder plans to get a motorbike and hit some sick jumps. Ryder's favorite thing about Elgin High School is the smell of the morning dew on the grass early in the morning, right before soccer practice. A few of Ryder's achievements are being named captain of the soccer team, awarded newcomer of the year for District 25, 5A in 2019, as well as first team all district academic all district receiving the first part award from his team. He is also part of the student council of National Honor Society. He's currently ranked in the top ten, I'm sorry, in the top fifth of his class. Riders favorite community are playing on the Elgin Wildcat men's soccer team is playing in every open gym and one time having a 17 game winning streak. Riders last statements to his teammates and the Elgin men's Wildcat men's varsity soccer team is everything figured out when we don't. If there's anything COVID taught me, it's that I don't. Life is spontaneous. We don't get to choose, we just get to live. That's all we need to do. Live, be spontaneous, be your best. Those were the senior night festivities here at Elgin High School. The two seniors being honored, Julio Villa, Ryder Michael, and I'm going to go ahead and read what Coach Michael and the team put together once again, just in case it didn't come through so clear on that broadcast. I was having a little bit of an issue connecting to the PA, so let's go ahead and sort of just go through that one more time just to make sure these seniors get the proper recognition for those of you watching with us at home here on Vipe Live. Thanks for joining us for tonight's match. The first senior honored was Captain Julio Villa. During his Elgin career, he played striker, defense, and rover. Coach Michael said he has never coached a more natural rover than Julio Villa. His parents, Annabel and Nectali Villa, would have escorted Julio if not for COVID. After graduating from Elgin High School, Julio plans to attend college and hopefully continue his soccer journey. His favorite thing about Elgin High School was playing soccer on Tuesday and Friday nights, and some of his achievements with the team include being named the captain and leading the team in goals and assists. Julio Villa's last statement was, enjoy every game, because before you know it, you'll be a senior. Those are his parting words to his teammates and the Elgin soccer community. Julio Villa, the first senior honored on senior night. And finally, the second senior honored, another captain, Ryder Michael, played center midfield and rover over the course of the 2021 season and his Elgin career. His parents, Anita Lawrence and Ronnie Michael, as well as brother Levi Michael and dog Polly, would have escorted Ryder if not for COVID. After graduating from Elgin, Ryder plans to quote, get a motorbike and hit some sick jumps. His favorite thing about Elgin High School was the smell of the morning dew on the grass early in the morning right before soccer practice. And he's had an accomplished career here in a Wildcat purple uniform. A few of his achievements include being named captain, being awarded newcomer of the year for district in 2019, as well as first team all district, academic all district, and the Purple Heart Award he received from his teammates. That's nice. He is also a part of the Student Council, National Honor Society, and is currently ranked in the top 5% of his class. His favorite memory while playing on the team is playing in every open gym and one time having a 16-17 game winning streak. His final statement to his teammates, sometimes we think we got everything figured out when we don't. If there's anything COVID taught me, it's that I don't. Life is spontaneous. We don't get to choose. We just get to live. That's all we need to do. Live, be spontaneous, and be your best self. Nice words. A little bit of senior wisdom there from the senior captain himself, Ryder Michael. Him and Julio Villa honored tonight here at Wildcat Stadium. Hope you enjoyed the presentation of Senior Night here on Vibe Live. One more half to go on the home schedule for Elgin Boys Soccer. It's going to be a good one. Bastrop had a lot of chances in that first half, but they were kept off the board. Meanwhile, Julio Villa and Memo Hernandez linked up for the game's only goal. Back in a few moments with some second-half coverage here on Vibe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student-athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades. 
and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Sure, Vite Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vite brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vite brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vite Sports. BYP. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Question, when you walk into the boardrooms of the most successful companies here in Texas, who do you meet? Answer, men and women who play high school sports. Education-based high school sports give us more than athletes we can root for. They give us leaders we can depend on. Question, so where will we find tomorrow's leaders? Answer, high school sports. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. One last half here in the home schedule of the Elgin Wildcats 2021 season. They play well to this point to lead it 1-0 against the Bastrop Bears. Big half for both teams for Elgin a chance to go out on top to end their season and deliver one last win for their seniors. For Bastrop, a chance to put themselves back into the playoff picture. As we're off and rolling to start the second half. That one's over the touchline and out. Despite Thomas Trainer's best efforts to save it. But the throw-in is conceded right back to the Bears. Nice senior night ceremony in case you're just joining us. Missed it here at halftime go back and watch this game on demand as soon as it's finished here on Vibe Live. See what Coach Michael had to say about these seniors as that headed effort is not going to challenge Macedo who has dealt with the 14 shots that Bastrop came his way with in the first half including a couple of just spectacular chances point blank range and Macedo somehow or another has been able to keep them out. Mostly quick reactionary saves in close. As this ball is nearly won for Memo Hernandez. Instead of coming out and challenging the bass drop players like he was on Friday in the Connolly game, Macedo has been a bit more disciplined today. Staying back on his line and Maybe that's made the difference for him. He's been able to make the tight saves in close 
and keep this match 1-0 in Elegant's favor. Bears were excellent to close out the first half. They dominated the final 10 minutes of the first half. Did everything but score. And you got to think they're a little bit frustrated at this current score, given the way that they've played. As Tyson plays it up ahead, only as far as Luis Hernandez in the center. Diaz off the right flank. His crosses have been dangerous this evening. Right there, he's dispossessed by Julio Villa, helping out on defense. The adjustment for Coach Michael once the Wildcats got the lead. Julio Villa was the goal scorer, and he's been chipping in now on the defense. Now this through ball from Memo Hernandez will send Villa in. Left side of the box. Villa turns, lays it off for Hernandez. Long distance strike is off wide to the right. Solid attacking play, good buildup from the Cats who get their sixth shot of the game. That compares to 15 for the Bears. But all Elgin cares about right now is holding on to that one nil lead, trying to avenge a loss, a three nil loss at Bastrop back in February in the reverse fixture just over a month ago. Aviles couldn't keep it in. Throw in for Tejas. Last touch by Harbin Grandes. So a slow start to the second half. Wildcats perhaps had the best chance of the second half's opening four minutes. Grandes played back for Hernandez. Memo Hernandez, so much energy in the middle. But right there, he's dispossessed by the much bigger defender, Noah Tyson. Tyson still fighting for it. And Elgin right now just kind of muddying up this game in the middle. Bastrop's had some very quick counters in the first half, and looks like the Wildcats have adjusted well to that style. No foul there as Julio Villa goes down. But a great challenge to win the ball back. Juan Mendoza gets the job done. Moss lays it off for Hernandez. Peyton Moss played back to Anthony Jones. And a little sloppy now for Elgin. Give it away. Bears have 28 goals to their name this year compared to 51 allowed. That total a bit misleading. They suffered some lopsided defeats in non-district play. But in district play, they have been tough and gritty. 3-5-4. and four. As this cross is played in from distance. Headed effort is over the bar. The defender Tyson got forward. And nearly tied up the score. Now this ball is huffed forward. Harbin Grandes. Memo Hernandez. On the right flank. Shot from distance. And the keeper, Tyson, Dylan Tyson, got just enough of it. Rebound could not find its way into the Elgin possession. Bears the other way. Nice ball. Threw ball up ahead to Diaz. Into the box. Diaz blasts it over the bar. And we remain at 1-0. Boy, when I said those first few minutes of the half were boring, I might have applied the announcer's jinx. Great end-to-end -end action there. Both teams have been excellent in the build-up. Great energy, great speed in the middle. But both teams have flubbed a couple of finishes tonight. 
The only goal belonging to Julio Villa. Memo Hernandez now. He's been all over the field here to start the second half. Luis Hernandez, strongly forward, confident looking run until he's thwarted by Aviles. Bears start the counter. Max Martinez, the junior, in along the left flank. Tries to turn, is tackled by Jones, no foul. Bears have a throw. Another passing grade for the Wildcats back four. Who have been tested, it's been Bastrop. That's dominating the possession as of late. Foot race is gonna be won by Mendoza, but he does concede the corner. Second corner of the game. Both of them have belonged to Bastrop. David Macedo will get the team organized. Substitution now for Coach Michael. Nope, not yet. That substitution will wait. Ryder Michael limbering up, getting ready to check back in. And eight minutes into our second half, a corner for the Bears. It's an in-swinger, edge of the box. And a headed effort could not be steered onto the frame of goal by Montufar. Anthony Jones will take the kick, the sweeper in defense. With the wind going against him, Jones drives it all the way to the center dot. Memo Hernandez draws a foul. Defender was all over him and probably a smart foul committed by the Bears. If Hernandez turns, he's got a lot of green grass in front of him. Tellez. Played into the box. Grande's challenges. The keeper Tyson is there. Throws it out. Up the wing. To his brother Noah Tyson. His through ball for Diaz. And Elgin wins a throw. Julio Villa played it off of Emmanuel Diaz. And won the ball. So Villa in more of an offensive role. In the first half. Second half, he's played on defense, and he's joined in on the counter. That seems to be what Coach Ronnie Michael will do while he still has this 1-0 lead that the Wildcats hope to maintain. Memo Hernandez chases this through ball. He's shoved off of it, and he's won a free kick in a promising position. The pace of Memo Hernandez giving Bastrop some trouble. And 10 minutes into the second half. Good chance here for Elgin to double their advantage. Looks like Anthony Jones may be lobbying the referee to take further action for that challenge. But look like they just got tangled up. Maybe lobbying to move that ball forward a bit. They place it at the 15 yard line, so about 25 yards out from goal. It'll be Luis Hernandez to take it. Who's been dynamite in the midfield today. Hernandez has a crack and he's put it in. Luis Hernandez doubles the lead for Elgin on a free kick from 25 yards out. Just stroked it into the back of the net. Clinically taken, 2-0 to the Cats. And what better way to start off the second half than that? Now maybe the tempo changes for Bastrop. Oscar Nunez's group has possessed the ball well. They've made dangerous runs into the box, but they've come up empty. Now maybe they try and play a bit more aggressive 
as Macedo comes out to meet that ball near the right, well, his left side of the box. Punts it into the wind. Wind kills it at the 45. And that's played by Grandes. Looked like it went off of the Bears defender. I think the official might have missed that one. Bastrop gets the ball. Villa. Headed by Aviles. Tyson settles it down. Lovely header to Martinez. Aviles. Challenged by Hernandez. Who may have gotten away with a little bit of a shove. Nope, he didn't get away with it. Referee saw it. Foul coming. And now the clock will stop. With just over 12 minutes gone by. In our second half. Ricardo Hernandez, the defender, a junior to take the kick on a pretty young Bastrop team, almost as young as this Elgin squad. Coach Oscar Nunez organizing his team, win picking up now at the back of this free kick. Hernandez plays the ball, it goes through the uprights, the field goal is good, three points would give the Bears the 3-2 lead. But it goes above the frame of goal. May have gone around the uprights there, actually. Either way, it was struck a bit too hard, but a referee calls it back. We'll do it again. From 35 yards out. Curling effort caught by Macedo. And that will be the end of that for Bastrop. Eckert headed up for Memo Hernandez, who's now playing up top for Elgin. Haven't seen that a ton this year. Hernandez so prolific in the midfield, trying to translate that to some attacking play. He already has in this match. He had an assist on the Julio Villa goal. And then he had the run that drew the foul that set up. Luis Hernandez for his free kick. As this is played over and out. Bastrop in this match. Staring down the barrel of a winless season on the road. Again, a lot of time for them to make that up with 27 minutes to play in this match. But Bastrop, 0-7-3 away from home this season. They only have 12 losses. Hernandez turns, gets around the defender, has his jersey pulled, and this might draw the game's first card. It'll be yellow for the defender of Bastrop. Not a nice challenge there. The offender will have to come out of the game. Cody Wilkinson, the sophomore, the tall sophomore, re-enters. And the yellow card committed right there by Caden Chapman that time on defense. He'll take a seat after being disciplined. Free kick from Villa. Rolls harmlessly into the box for Tyson. No Elgin defender could get a second effort on that one. Trainer. Martinez has it dispossessed by Villa. Julio Villa springs it forward for Hernandez. Outside of his box to get it is Tyson. And he's played it out into the middle. Jose Torres. Looking for Diaz. Couldn't get in behind. Julio Villa, the rover. The senior getting to do it all. 
in this his last home game in Elgin Wildcat Purple. Cats have been much, much better over the last 10 minutes, perhaps better than they've played all game. Drawing fouls in the attacking third, staying on the ball defensively, really sure, confident clearances. It's been a strong showing from Elgin on senior night thus far. Wildcats throw. Twenty five minutes to go in the match. Tayez. Wilkinson deals with that one. Makai Jefferson couldn't control it. Julio Villa. Running around at the back, able to control the tempo and get Elgin the possession. Ryder Michael charging forward. Chance for Memo Hernandez to advance with it. Lane Eckert running up the left flank. Hernandez on the ball. Keeps it. Wilkinson on the defense. Nice step over, middle Anthony Jones, kind of fanned on the attempt. Wilkinson the other way. Looking to play Jefferson in. Macedo comes out to get it. Wind keeps this ball way up in the air. That's been a menace for teams on that side. Elgin commits the foul. They were a bit disorganized there. First time in a while that's happened in this match. Chance for a Bears free kick from just over 30 yards out. Looks like Ramon, the sophomore midfielder, will be the one to take it. Macedo at the near post getting his defense organized. Ryder Michael forming the wall. Wall breaks too early. And looks like that free kick was played illegally. Ball awarded back to Elgin. And on a quick restart, through ball play for Memo Hernandez. Maybe they've caught the Bears out here. Grandes can't catch up to it. And looks like Bastrop is going to recover from that disorganized restart. Looks like the... Uh, call from the referee there was that the free kicking player that being Ramon played the ball a second time before anybody else touched it you don't see that call every day Luis Hernandez who scored the second goal on a free kick from about this far out well not this far out a little closer in it's about 35 yards away where he scored that free kick twenty five yards away I should say so the fifteen yard line here at Wildcat Stadium Bass drop with a throw taken by Torres and his foot came up or maybe the referee calling that the hands were at the side of his head and not behind. Either way, ball back to Elgin. Nearly halfway through our second half of this senior day, the final home game of the season for Elgin soccer. They look for their second win in district play and their sixth overall on the season. Bears looking for their first win since the last time they faced Elgin on February 12th and playoff chances quickly fading for Bastrop unless they can turn this match around in a heartbeat. Ramon. Ball played in. Jefferson is offside. Second time that he's had a promising run called back. 
It's been very organized at the back for Elgin. Ryder Michael. The all-academic player, last year's newcomer of the year, playing in his last home game in Elgin Purple. Hernandez laid off to Tellez. Played up ahead, Harvey and Grandes. Grandes patiently. Wins a throw. More, more trouble in the midfield as Elgin extends the pressure. But a chance here. Trader in along the left flank with time and space. Treading towards the middle. Try to play it in. Jefferson snatched at the opportunity. Just couldn't get enough strength on that shot attempt from a good area. Ryder Michael wins a throw. Another good chance for Bastrup there as they approach the 20 shot mark in this game. That was their 19th. Strong challenge there by Jose Torres to stay on the ball. Held off Luis Hernandez. Not an easy feat. Play switched. Noah Tyson. Played back Diaz. Challenged by Memo Hernandez. Into the box now. A chance! And they've missed it! Bastrop fans appealing for a foul. Since it was inside the box, it would have been a penalty, but deemed to be no harm, no foul on the play. The chance belonged to Ramon, who missed it wide to the left. Macedo closed down the angle. That is the 20th shot for Bastrop as their frustration continues to mount. We'll see if they can keep pressing forward. Plenty of time still in this match for them to get two back. And the way they're holding the ball, I wouldn't put it past them. Trainer played in nicely. This time Jefferson is onside. Makai Jefferson's ball is slowed down and held. Everything but the finishes now for Bastrop, who can't start pressing just yet. 17 minutes, a lot of time, but the pressure has to be mounting on them to keep their playoff hopes alive. Strong challenge there by Memo Hernandez. Ball won back by Wilkinson. Played up ahead by Hernandez. Weird bounce. Harvey and Grandes nearly jumped onto the ball. Tellez. And the keeper, Dylan Tyson, comes up to deal with that one. But plays it lazily into the middle. Ryder Michael settles it down onto his right foot. Michael again. Villa's ball. Connects with Grandes. Turning back up the midfield. Luis Hernandez. Mendoza. To Grandes, trying to turn, putting the pressure on. And helping Elgin get situated here in the attacking third. Just what they want to do with this 2-0 lead. Villa calmly played forward for Hernandez. Whose free kick just completely changed the complexion of this match. Taking it from 1-0 to 2. Oh, and a giveaway. Noah Tyson. Persistent on his attack, but it's cleared by Julio Villa. The senior whose ninth minute tally gave Elgin the lead. And now he's been tasked with protecting it. Coach Ronnie Michael moving him back into defense and shouting inspiration 
from the far touch line here at Wildcat Stadium. Jay Kerbin with you here on Vipe Live. Elgin scored in the ninth minute via Julio Villa. And again in the 50th, when Luis Hernandez potted home a free kick from about 25 yards out. It's been impressive today from the Cats. The performance of the defense and the goalkeeper, David Macedo, cannot be understated. Bears have come up with 20 shots already and have nothing to show for it. Bears on a seven-game winless streak at the moment. Still in a chance for playoff contention because they started district play so well. Cervantes' ball is in for Jefferson, but Macedo will come out and leave no room for scraps. Wilkinson holds off Hernandez long enough to play it forward to Diaz. Diaz holds off Lane Eckert. But he's triple teamed. Great team support on the defense. Pass drop did well just to keep possession alive there. Bad bounce. Ball hit Eckert in the face, but he recovered. Luis Hernandez looking for Grandes. Couldn't connect. A little bit of sustained pressure here for Bastrop. Confident looking run from Ramon. Ramon onto his right foot. Macedo takes care of the seconds before Jefferson could get there. 21 shots for Bastrop compared to just 10 for Elgin. Hasn't told the full story. Via to Michael, the two seniors linking up. Oh, but a misplay. Trainer. Laid off into the center. Jefferson's shot. Just right at the keeper, Macedo. Anywhere else, it's probably a goal. But once again, perfect positioning from the freshman. Another sparkling save. Offside. Bears are caught off. This second half so far with 13 minutes to play. More of the same as the first half. Bastrop getting these slightly better chances. Slightly more possession. But it's been Elgin who's had the ability to finish. Keeper Tyson takes care of that opportunity. Wildcats earn a throw and they can wind the clock down even further with just over 12 minutes to play in the match. Wildcats finish up their season on Friday, 5.30 p.m. at Hendrickson where they'll be looking to avenge an earlier loss. They could be on their way to avenging a mid-season loss to this Bastrop Bears squad here tonight. 3-0, Bastrop won in the reverse fixture. Ryder Michael puts an end to that confident-looking run by Ricardo Hernandez. But the ball's won back. Anthony Jones takes care of it by playing it back to Macedo. Trainer. To Jefferson. Great defensive support by Tellez. Mendoza up ahead to Luis Hernandez. He's dispossessed. Shot from distance is handled by Macedo. It was Ricardo Hernandez having a crack at it. And Macedo now starts to stall. A little early for that. Still 11 minutes to play in the match, but Elgin starting to believe. They can see this through. They've had that belief from the beginning tonight. They've looked confident throughout. And a lot, much of that to do with the leadership of those two senior captains being honored tonight. Chance there 
for Bastrop, but Ramon couldn't settle the bouncing ball down and get a good touch on it. Starting to get a little bit sloppy here from the Bears, who have to be frustrated. They've had so many shots on goal, but have not been able to nick one back just yet. Even though, some could argue, they've been deserving. But so far, David Macedo deserving of every bit of this scoreline. Eckert with a strong challenge in the middle. Diaz has won it, though. Jefferson with a neat little flick, but there's no one there to support it. Clock stops for an injury with 10 minutes to play in the match. We'll step aside for just a moment as we hope that the injured Bastrop Bear is okay. You're watching Elgin Soccer on Vipe Live. So the injured player for the Bears appears to be helped to the sideline. That was Josue Cervantes, who's been prominent in the midfield today. We hope he's okay for this Bastrop squad going forward. They do play one more game this season. It is on, it is on Friday against Maynard. But it's a game that might not have any playoff implications if they can't get a result here. Diaz's effort is blocked nicely. Julio Villa has just been a warrior at the back ever since he was moved back into a defensive role. Spin move by Ramon. James Ramon getting forward but getting blocked by Anthony Jones. Wilkinson playing lazily ahead. And Elgin comes the other way with a clearance. Grande speeding towards it. And he is unable to win the throw, but a good effort nonetheless. Only nine minutes to play. Sand in the hourglass running thin for Bastrop as Elgin continues to assert their security at the back. Grande's trying to win the ball. Making life difficult. And an excellent through ball played from the back. Jefferson laid off. Turning and shooting. But not getting enough of it was Diaz. Macedo could take his time. And punt it away. A low driven punt into the wind. Trying not to let the wind affect it all that much. Hernandez pressures the ball and forces them to play it all the way back to Dylan Tyson, the keeper. Out wide. Grandes pressures. Held off by Jose Torres, who's made some tough challenges for Bastrop today. Tellez pressuring. Trainer the other way with pace. Through ball. Looking for Noah Tyson. Couldn't get it to him. Played up ahead, Ramon. James Ramon's ball is blocked by Villa. Noah Tyson gets it back. Edge of the box. Tyson goes down. No foul called. 
Strong challenges from Elegant, and the referees have been letting him play. Haven't called too many fouls in this match, and when they have, it was Elegant who was able to cash in, scoring a free kick to make it 2 0. Wilkinson trying to make his foray into the box. Nice run by Ramon, but just too many defenders to beat. Elgin parking the bus at this point in the match. Everybody back. This headed flick is dangerous for a moment, but there was no run to support it. And with under seven minutes to play, the score remains 2-0. Macedo kind of muffs that punt. But his teammate Eckert is there in support. Uresti couldn't get it past Ryder Michael. Elgin looking to make it two out of three on this homestand. Try to follow up Wednesday's win against Cedar Creek with their second win of district play. Trainer ahead to Jefferson. Can't keep it from going over the goal line. There will be less than six minutes left by the time Macedo takes this kick. Cats hit a bump in the road on Friday in the loss to Connolly, but can make it a 2 one homestand to close out their season before they hit the road to Hendrickson for a season finale. Wildcats will not qualify for the playoffs this year, but if this result stays, they will keep Bastrop from doing that tonight. Now a miscommunication. Memo Hernandez nearly pounced on it. Oh, apologies for the camera right there. Back down to Wildcat Stadium we go. Julio Villa with a flying clearance. Tellez played up ahead. Grandes flicked on for Hernandez. Neatly done to himself there. And Memo Hernandez can control the pace now. Plays it back. And Elgin just smartly clearing it in as ever so precious time continues to tick. Anthony Jones played to Wilkinson. Keeper Tyson comes up to thwart Ryder Michaels attempt. Wouldn't it be nice to get him a goal in this match? Julio Villa, the other senior captain, scored the first goal. Tellez, ball played ahead. Memo Hernandez is on side and turning. Lays it off for Lane Eckert. Eckert, edge of the box, and he just has hit it over the bar. Surely that would have won it for Elgin. But instead, they'll have to wait another four minutes. Bears struggling to keep up the same pressure they had about ten minutes ago. They had a big surge towards the beginning of this half, but ever since, it's been Elgin trying to put their finishing stamp on the match. And they're three minutes in change away from doing that. Just doesn't seem like Bastrop is going to have enough time to get back into it. They would need to make something happen right now. Jose Torres helps win the throw by warding off the defender there. Great work rate continues in the middle for Elgin. Every pass is disrupted as the men in purple continue to park the bus and just try and see this match through. A real luxury afforded to them by that second goal from Luis Hernandez after Memo won the free kick back at the 50th minute mark. This effort from distance misses wide to the right. And that might have been Bastrop's chance right there. Less than three minutes to go.
Ryder Michael playing the last two, two playing the last two minutes of his Wildcats career. Grande swings the ball. Memo is dispossessed. Went for a little went for a little dribble move. Couldn't do it. Now Anthony Jones getting forward with it, showing off his skill. Jones with pace up the right flank. Jones with a step over. Still on the ball. Cuts it back in. Asking for support. And doesn't come in time. Wilkinson the other way. Cody Wilkinson. Plays one in. Not such great spacing here from the Bears. Everybody bunched together. Minute 40 to go in the match. Cross in was headed aside by Julio Villa, the senior. Michael laid it off for Jones. His ball has Harvey and Grandes in with a chance. Keeper Dylan Tyson dealt with it. But the Cats have a throw. They have a 2-0 lead. And they are one minute away from seeing this one through. And leaving out their 2021 season on a high note. And for such a young team, it's a great feeling to be able to come up with a pair of wins. It looked for a couple of couple of scary moments this season, like Elgin was going to have a tough time getting off the schneid in district play. But they've rebounded real nicely here at the end of their season. Final 45 seconds. Little space here for Trainer, and he just can't get it onto his boots. That's been the story of the night for Basharop. Just lacking that finishing bite to the attack. And for the Elgin Wildcats, what a way to go out on senior night here. A defensive performance to remember, a clean sheet, well deserved for David Macedo. Eight seconds to go, now seven. He might have to make one more save. Tyson from distance, played in over the top, and that's it. 2-0, your final score. The Elgin Wildcats finish out their home schedule with a win over Bastrop. They avenge the loss in the reverse fixture and eliminate the Bears from playoff contention. And most importantly, they send off their senior captains, Ryder Michael and... Julio Villa, who scored today, with a win. For everyone at Vipe Live, I'm Jake Herbin, saying so long. It's been fun to get out here to Wildcat Stadium and call some Elgin soccer this season. Best of luck to the team in their season finale on Friday. So long for just a while.